Hi, it's Ursula from EasyScraps.com, and today I'm going to just do a little bit of carving stamps. Um, a couple of friends of mine on Facebook were wondering how I do it, so I'm just going to do a quick tutorial. Um, you can find lots of information out on YouTube on how to carve stamps, so I'm going to whiz through the basic part of it. Um, but just kind of try and cover it quickly in case you haven't seen a video. So here's a box of some of my carved stamps. Uh, these two right here I just carved to use on a Christmas card for this year, 2012. And um, I tend to like the Master Carve or Speedball Master Carve, the pink color rubber to carve from. It's a little bit stiffer. They do make a white or off-white version of it. I don't love this as much. It's a little bit softer, and in fact, here's one that I had carved and the top part broke off. So I tend to like the pink. It's a little bit stiffer to carve, but it, I find, lasts a little bit longer. And so what do, what do you carve? How do you get your designs on it? Well, generally, um, I, can, I use to either freehand, so I use a pen, you know, a nice, this is the slicky pen, and that works really well. You can use pencils. You, anything that will basically draw on the rubber is fine. And you can take die cuts and um, trace around them. If it's a word, just be careful. You want to reverse it. So you would turn it over and then trace. Uh, you can print things out on the computer and then use tracing paper and trace on, trace around it with the pa tracing paper, or the, not tracing paper, graphite paper underneath um, to transfer the image. Or what some people do is they just scribble on the back with a pencil, a graphite pencil, and then um, use that instead of the uh, transfer paper. So those are just a couple of ways that you can get your images onto the rubber. And um, you can see this one here, this um, stamp here, I've basically done this design and then carved it out. So I'm going to take a quick break. Oh, and then here's the tool that I was talking about. They make um, tools that you could buy, the tool and then the thing to put in the carving blades that basically go in this end. The reason I like this one is I'm trying to do this one-handed. My son is supposed to be helping me tape and he's not. Um, the tool's pop out of the end. How cool is that? So you can bring it with you. So anyway, um, like that little, the new pink one, rather than the wood handled one, uh, but they both work pretty much the same. All right, so I have my tool put together. I've taken a die cut and I reversed it and traced it using a pencil onto my block of rubber. And then I'm using like the medium tip of the tool. Um, there's a larger one that will take more out. There's a thinner one that will take less of um, the rubber away. But for the most part, I tend to use this medium one. And what I usually do is I usually try to go from the, f the most amount of rubber first. So I try and go you generally around the outline. And you'll see I stopped right there in the corner because I try not to go in to a corner of the design. I always try and work outwards. And the reason I do it that way is in case I slip, you know, when I go sliding off, because sometimes you will, especially in the red or the pink rubber, it's a little bit stiffer. You have to push a little bit harder and you can slip and then you gouge out the design, the internal part of the design. If I slip, I would rather slip on the outside because I'm basically carving that away. I don't care as much about that. And so I just basically go around. And for this part, so this is all the design I'm trying to get rid of, all this background. I want to keep all of this. So now I can just kind of start basically getting rid of it. And generally, if I've got a lot of this extra rubber here, I'll gouge out the or carve out the outline away and then I'll use scissors to basically cut it back. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of carving your stamp. Um, if you 
have the smaller one, like the smaller one, I haven't decided whether I'm going to keep this middle part, um, but I'm going to show you on this other section here some other ideas that I have for you. So if I were just going to do an outline here of this, but then keep the middle, I would probably switch blades and then use the skinnier blade just to do to gouge out the outline. But really what I wanted to show you, I mean, there's tons of YouTube videos on how to carve stamps, so I'm going to leave it at that. But what I wanted to show you was the other thing you can do is take your stamps up a notch. And so you can embellish the stamp part of it. And one of the things I've been playing around with is using tools like um, the book binder alls. This is just a um, paper clip. Uh, this came with toenail clippers. <laughs> um, uh, that's some kind of handle. Back of a paintbrush. And a Japanese screw punch. And you can use all of these things to make, basically, polka dots. So I can use my Japanese hole punch to punch out a hole. I can make an indent with the back of a paintbrush. I can do the same thing with my paper clip. And all these things are going to add um, different size polka dots. Um, sorry about the interruption. We ran out of space, so I had to clean th some things off my phone. Um, but as I was saying, I just use different tools to make different, um, different polka dots. And you can also use the tools to do cross hatching. So I can take a section and use something with a pointy end and basically dig into it and create some hash marks to add a little bit of texture to my stamps. So rather than just carving plain, plain old rubber stamps, you can add some texture to them and take them up a notch. And anyway, I will stamp with this and post the pictures on the blog. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.